Welcome back YouTube, Tutu UK. Welcome back to the Blast Furnace. It's getting fucking warm. It's getting warm, lad. It's 32 degrees on a Saturday. Just shut the door. Um, how are we all doing? We all doing. What is it? End of 24th of April. 24th of April. The goal line is in sight, maybe. The goal line is in sight. I've had a few beers. He executes a perfect ten dive. The goal line is in sight. Because well, it is now three o'clock. <sighs> not happy, lad. No, no, I'm not happy, man. I am denied about doing this video. It's a pickups video. Talking Ed. Not my name's Stuart, not Ed, by the way. Talking head. Talking head. Talking pissed up head. Um yeah, I've got not a great deal, but I've, there's a few bits I just want to get put away. And um the likelihood of anything else appearing anytime soon is probably slightly remote. Uh car boots have started back up here in the UK. Um, I would love to say yes, I'll be going to them every week. I have been going to them, I think last week they started. I'm going to get tomorrow, but um, for them to know, maybe don't know, I, I have a, a busted knee, like quite badly busted knee, which I'm waiting for an operation. So ordinarily, when I go to the car boot, I do go on my bike. Uh, last year and the previous year, we make fob, because uh, it doesn't live too far. We've been stalling out, you've, put, you've seen the videos. Obviously, Rob's got his own fucking life. He's a selfish bastard like that. He does his own things at the weekend. Really inconsiderate. Um, so I've been kind of beholden to him because I like, you know, I can walk, but I can't walk very far. Um, and ordinarily, I would go on my bike. So you get a bit of exercise, you get a bit of purpose, you know, the whole thing. Uh, but yeah, with a smashed up knee, uh, that's not really going to happen. So fingers crossed. This year, get it fixed, and then hopefully next year, um, you know, I won't have to rely on Rob as much. Uh, but obviously, stalling now, if we want to sell our, sell our tat, then uh, Fob's the man with the van. Uh, but, you know, in the, in, in the cases where he just disowns me and fucks off with, to his own life, which is, like I say, is really inconsiderate, I'll have to go and do my own steam, which I've, you know, I've done for years anyway. And to be honest, it's, it's, it, it's probably needed more now. Um, with a busted knee, with lockdown, um, yeah, I'm, I'm getting a, a, a right fat bastard. I was a fat bastard before, but now I'm a proper FFB. So shit needs to change. Killer's heel. It's a killer's heel, I tell you. I'm not a big foodie person, but this is an Achilles heel. But we have got some, some actually, um, channel. Oh shit, hang on. It's like the power lead is a bit dodgy on the, on the Dreamcast, I just realised. Um, what was I going to say? Um, something for the channel. Uh, a, f a first? No, not a first. Um, I don't know what word I'm looking for. Where it's um, a mark that you put down. why you don't drink on YouTube. People say don't drink on eBay, don't drink on YouTube. I don't know. It's an iconic, it's an iconic day on the channel. But it, obviously it's been here a, a, a fair bit, but... Hang on, I forgot something. This is a shit video. Get off your butt. Right, try that again. <laughs> um, landmark. I knew it come to me, it's a landmark. It's a landmark in this channel. Um, in terms of a, a, a sort of pickup. Now, it's not for everybody. I know that it's not for everybody, but for me, it's like. Yeah. It weren't cheap. It weren't cheap, but it weren't as bad as it could have been. Um, I've got a weird, like, 
um, import pickup from Facebook. <laughs> But it wasn't really from Facebook, it was from looking at the group, but the guy was actually on... It was easy on I'll come to it anyway. Fucking rambling. I hope we've been all doing well. So we might be... Maybe people are seeing sense now, this stupid pandemic, and we're coming back out of it. it Remain to be seen. I still can't see anything going on this year, in terms of an event. There might be a meet-up, you know, we might get lucky with that, but... you got the whole, whole hotel thing, and... You know, I don't want to be going, meeting up with a group of lads and then uh, everyone having to sit down and only six or t What's the point in that? Six people. Well, actually, there's probably less than six people that like me, so that might not be a bad idea. Who knows? Several cans have been consumed. Dave Burstall. Dave Retro Games Play Paddling Channel Mark 2. The Tootie Edition. This is, a, this is the... the the Dave, Dave Retro Games Play Badly Edition. Just make it more enjoyable. I mean, it makes it I have a lot more forgettable. Because I don't know what I've just said five minutes ago. Um, sticking, sticking with. Yeah, sticking with, because that's all we've been, we've been talking. No, we haven't. Um, in line, in line with uh, the kind of one of the sort of pulls, one of the, uh, the, the <laughs> one of the um, things, the thing, you know, just, you know just <laughs> with my channel, <laughs> trying to piece together these games, one of the drivers that I've been trying to do on this channel for these, some of these games that are bought, boxed, loosed, whatever, I was trying to piece them all together. Uh, last one, we have a we have a subset. Welcome to the subset. Go on, get ready. Welcome to the subset. Go on, get ready. Uh, been a while since I used that. Um, so, Super Empire Strikes Back, GVC. Dems that watched, thank you for watching. Them that didn't, fuck you, you bastards. Like, comment, subscribe. This channel won't exist without your money. Because I can't afford a camera, even though I'm recording a camera. And I can't afford to upload, even though I'm already uploading. Uh, and all that Patreon bollocks that they all fucking spin. Anyway, that's enough of that. Digging them out. Um, <laughs> this is terrible. It's a terrible video. Super, Super Empire Strikes Back. The, the last one of the trilogy of a subset. And um, it, is, it, does, it really does pay to have a bit of patience. As Guns N' Roses would say. Um, we've managed to pick the manual up. And it's the JVC version. So that now completes this game and the subset. There we go. Did I ever show you the cartridge? I know in the video I was sort of... Um, I just didn't want it to go on too long, but... I don't know if I ever showed you it at the end. Because it was really, really weirdly yellow, and I think there's still a tiny bit. I don't know if you can see it, just round here. Can you see it there? Look, but that was literally everywhere on this cartridge. Um, so, it, you know, I was literally thinking, literally, literally, so many literalists. Um, but I was contemplating buying another cartridge, and I just thought, you know what, let's give that a whirl. You know, I have to like give kudos as well to um, a couple of different sort of channels, and they're not gaming channels. They're the toy, the toy channels. I watch a lot of toy channel stuff. Um, but yeah, just watching them and some of the techniques they use because it's all plastic. That you know, the, the plastic crack. Talk to toy channels. I should have mentioned this. Um, I haven't mentioned them in the past, I think we've done deals in the past, um, but back to Toy Channels, a bit of a sh mini shout out I suppose, and it's not game related, although we sort of dabbles a little bit, it's um, Tom, Pizarro's Pieces, um, I've been on, t been on Tom's channel, uh, him and his mate Chris, <laughs> the Love Hammer, Big C, uh, lovely guys, both of them, I've met Tom, I've met Tom at a, a, um, a toy fair, he's a toy collector, but Pizarro's pieces, link down below. Um, say, fucking top lads. 
but they he did like a series of um i suppose uh live streams lockdown like like dana fucking dana dana the ghost um was doing but for toys and they had different different people come on in, in the toy community you know because they've got a toy community on youtube believe it or not yeah, and they're all a bunch of bastards like the Iron Retro one as well, the gaming stuff. Um, but he had me on just to sort of mix it up a little bit. Uh, uh, obviously not very successful, I don't think. <laughs> because they're all waiting to watch toy people talk about old toys. And I loved old toys, you know. That's why I watch a lot of toy channels. Um, but I can't own any. I, I can't. It, it's There's no space. And it will just get out of hand really, really quickly. Um... But yeah, if you want to have a go of, of seeing me make an ass of myself on another live stream, not not pissed, not I was stone cold sober, believe it or not. Yes, probably having a drink may have actually uh, improved it. Um, but it went on for like a live stream, and then he had, had me back to ask some questions, which in hindsight, because uh, he, he said to me, he goes, oh, make them, make, don't make them too easy, though, Stuart. Make them a bit difficult. I may have made them too difficult. Um, but go and have a watch. You might enjoy it. Uh, like I said, I'm on. I'm on There'll be one that will be with me on there, and then it'll be the last one where he has the guests on, and that's where I ask them the questions. Laugh and a giggle. If you've got fuck all else to do, clearly you've got nothing else to do because you're watching this absolute tripe. Um, but Tom, say a, a great, a great watch. But it's one of these um, sort of toy collectors. I kept saying this in, in the videos when you know when I was on there. You know, toy collectors and the video game collectors aren't too far apart. There's very, there's so many tropes that uh, both sort of sets of people go through: the buying, the selling, the collecting, the hoarding, and then that that kind of evolution and the sort of refinement, and even like moving some completely on and going a completely different direction and buying it all again. And Tom's done that loads of times. So um, yeah, it, it, it's it's a great watch. Uh, it's Tom's channel. Definitely. There's this, this the car boot stuff. I think he shot himself in the foot. Uh, I think he realised that. I did what I was saying to him. I said, mate, don't, don't video it. Because if people know where it is, they'll all swarm. And, you know, he ended up with, like, finding very little. Because everyone went to the car boot that he was at. Uh, and the last, I'll tell you what, one more of a channel I'm going to mention. And this guy does not need my help what at all at all and it's nothing to do with gaming it's nothing to do with collecting it's just a weird um genre that i found on youtube and i've, I've watched them god like last three four years now and it's like travel vlogs but no don't don't switch off just yet uh it started with um, Simon Wilson, and I found it from a Liverpool fan page where I, thought I mentioned this before. Where he went to go from Liverpool to um, was it Istanbul? No, the, the um, European Cup final. Fucking hell, still had too much to drink. Uh, <laughs> uh, in a like a Lada or a Skoda, but from from that, obviously he did other videos, but. Equally, he did other videos with, other, with a couple of other people, and this there's two of them. But I'm going to mention this guy anyway because I don't want to like bore you with this because I know it's not what you come for. But his name's Harold Boulder, and he's a Norwegian guy. Um, and I'll put the links. I'll put the link to the first of these videos. It, basically, he went and stayed with a Maasai tribe in in Tanzania. It, he's been in Tanzania in this like set of videos for a while, but the Maasai one are absolutely it, it's fucking mind blowing. Someone left a comment on one of his videos, was beat, and for me it was like the perfect thing what YouTube was meant to be about. He went, and I don't know where the guy was, probably from Brazil or something. He went, he said, so, um, I'm going to paraphrase it. Harold, the only uh, the only guy who doesn't beg for views, subs, likes, Patreon or nothing. He just makes the videos, and there's, I think there's like one or two ads in the whole video. They're about an hour long. That's what YouTube was about and that guy's made a massive difference watch the videos honestly it will fucking warm your heart you know the, the, the human population in in the world aren't as much of a 
bunch of bastards as the fucking mainstream media make out. I tell you, honestly, brilliant videos to watch. Um, and you, you have to look at the sort of description at the end of some of them. Uh, but yeah, amazing, amazing. The human race isn't fucking scum. I tell you, don't believe everything you're reading the news. Don't watch the news. They're fucking lying to you. But anyway, that's just like a travel vlog. So a bit different. That's, you know... The trouble is with the gaming stuff, the retro stuff, there's very few people do it. They're all picking up fucking 360 and don't even fucking start me on that Ever Cable shit. Ever KVS. Oh, we're going to consoleize it now. Fucking hell! What the fuck? What the fuck? If you want arcade games, just get a Raspberry Pi. Just get a modded Xbox. If you want NES games, just get an NES Mini and put all the games on there. Because that's all the other K's doing, it's just it's money for old rope. And the fucking, oh my, there must be like the At Games, At Games version 2 or something. Fucking hell. <laughs> but yeah, so the point I'm trying to make is, um, from the retro side, there are some channels that I have been watching, quite a new ones, mainly from, a little bit from, um, YouTuber of the month, um, what's the guy's name? Spiel Games, German guy. Ars, 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 Ars Spiel. That might be like, I'm sure it's Ars, Ars Spiel. Um, but he's a German guy, speaks possibly better English than I do German. I like his, he's got an amazing collection. I'll put a link down below. If, if you watch YouTube German Month, you've seen it all before. Um, but there's a few guys, I'll, I'll mention them in, in the next video because I think we've. Uh, I'm going to bore you all to death with shout outs, which is not what you come here for. You come here to see what other shit that I bought. Stick on the shelf. Right. But I say, the travel, the travel vlogs, it's pure escapism, honestly. I just like just to switch off and just watch them guys. Excellent. Okay. Um, Still got Kev's box. We'll do Kev's box at the end. Um, so no Eddie roller core got a bit upset because I I, um, I rejigged the format a couple of videos back. <laughs> so we'll we'll leave that. Um, what we'll do? Well, I, I tell you what, we'll do this one. This is the weirdest pickup ever. So this chap put this on um, Japanese. It's on the Facebook page, but it's a weird name, like Japanese retro game collecting and reselling or something weird like that. And they had it for stupid price, like stupid. And I said to him, right, um, would you do it for this much posted? And he said yes. Then when I looked at his profile on Facebook, I realised he weren't that far away. Um, and uh, I, I sort of messaged him because I sort of agreed to buy it for this price. And um, I said to him, I said, I'm, I'm not sure... There you are, you might only be down the road. Because it was in the same county. And he went, just give me your postcode, I'll, I'll, I'll pop it through the post for you. Um, we're still in like the COVID bullshit at this point. So I said, mate, wicked. Just said, just put, post, post it, post it, post it for the letterbox. You know, if, you, if you're that worried about COVID and all that kind of shit. And he did. I was out walking the dogs, come back, and it was there on the, on the, on the doormat. Twenty quid, all in, and all I need is um, can Hannah Montana's greatest hits to replace the front. It's Einhander on the PlayStation One, Japanese. Um, but weirdly enough, then I did find this advertised on the market on Facebook Marketplace for the same. Like I think a little bit more, <laughs> but I was like. Pfft. And it's got the spine, spine cottage. <laughs> Fucking by 20 quid. D delivered, hand delivered through the door. Yes, yes, thank you very much. We'll put it on the shelf. <sighs> smells a class, that does. It smells a bit stale, actually. Um, but yeah, for them that don't know, these are just CD cases, guys. That dirty 
dirty crack I want you. Now that, uh, <laughs> if we just swap the case over, just swap the front over for a CD. Hannah Montana's greatest hits, like I said. You're not listening. You're not listening to me. Um, let's stick that over. There's not a great deal doing. We've got the landmark, the landmark pickup for the channel. Getting up, man. 33.6. Oh, shit, fucker. Fucking hell. Whew. They reckon May, or are you next month? It's a good job. It's a good job. We'll see. We'll see, young man. Well, that's been going on. Yeah, but go and check YouTube of the month out anyway. The old mate Scott, Sega Zombie. Um, right, so. I'm going to talk about these first. Because otherwise it won't make, well it will make sense, but it, it, will, it won't flow as nicely. So, um. Bill, Betty Horde, Betty Horde Clinic, um, he's been buying Zap 64, I think, magazines. And this is old paper. It's old pano paper. If you're not interested in pano paper, then fuck off. Um, but we're discussing, because we're old and boring and weird like this, uh, the best way to store um, some of these old magazines. Now the comic world, comic collectors and stuff like that, which I'm sure there's a, a, a community on YouTube, if you're so inclined, they have their certain ways of doing doing it, this and, this. and to be honest, the magazines, although I don't think the paper's quite the same, I think with some of the, the comics, it's cheaper paper, uh, but the magazines, especially from like mid 80s, late 90s, maybe they're kind of more glossy, a bit like higher quality I would probably argue so some of the rules apply but they don't apply um, and obviously size is different this, that, and that. anyway long story short is me and Bill have this conversation go back and forth just on comment sections about the best way to do this so I've gone down the route which I sort of said to him I'm gonna look at this fuck it so I'll, uh, it's, it's called back and um, uh, backboarding so essentially what you have is you have a, an acid free cardboard sleeve at the back of the, the magazine of the comic because that's where it's come from the comic world you have then have your comic sl slid in so the board provides the sort of structure and the board's bigger generally bigger than the, well, should be bigger than the magazine so the edges don't get smashed so the board takes the impact it, it'll make sense when I show you um, and obviously the sleeve then has to be like this acid free so it doesn't leach um, Again, them that probably bothered to watch the videos. Uh, case of put with a lot of plastics over over time, a lot of the oils leach out of them. Like PC Engine sleeves, PC Engine um, cue card sleeves. Um, and I suppose for if it's that kind of oil leaking onto, like I say, um, what's a card? You could wipe it off. But when it leaches into paper, which is absorbent, you know, you get. You're, I'm guessing, yes, you get issues. Now, I'm not trying to say that the magazines I've got are like, you know, like fucking Superman issue one or anything rare like that. Because obviously that's a different kettle of fish. This is just to try and preserve what I've got in as best condition as I can. Um, so, anyway, long story short, I bought, I invested, of my own hard earned money, um, in some boards and some sleeves or bags as they call them. So these are called magazine bags and magazine boards So because obviously magazines and comics are, is the sizing. So these have come from, well it says the brand's called Comic Concept, I think it's a US one, 
but it was from a UK seller called Silver Acre. So it's comics and collectibles. Daryl Jones. Chester. So he owes me some fucking... He owes me some spondulis for sponsorship here. But I took a fly ass off. I thought, you know what? Worst case scenario is... Um, I'll get... And the, the sleeves are a lot... I mean, the board... Because it's cardboard. They're quite heavy. They're not, they're not cheap. But the fact is, you're not... You're not buying them forever. Does that make sense? So if you've got like a run of super plays, what's that? Forty-seven magazines. So it's only you know, you're buy them once. You know what I mean? Um, so I bought a hundred boards, and I bought two hundred sleeves. And these are the sleeves I bought from Silver Acre. So these are called um, say uh, comic collectibles. And that's the sizing. You can pause that. But you find them on this site anyway, and these are the boards that, that I got, and I've got literally one left. Um, and it's you, you, you get like a a sheen side and like a, a rough side, so the sheen side sits in the back, and your magazine sits in front of that. If that makes sense. If not, you're fucking stupid. Get off my fucking show. Get off my channel. Um, but these are. Yeah, so the sleeves obviously have to be a little bit bigger. I don't, I'm not making much sense here. So the sleeves are 235 by 305, and the boards are 2, 230 by 307. Yeah? So they're the boards. And they're the sleeves. Um, I think these were the biggest ones that this seller, Silver Acre, did. Now... This way gets a little bit. Ah. I bought these for um, a certain collection of magazines, and they worked perfectly. I then thought, well, you know what? Because as you all, you all know this anyway. You all, you all fucking know it. <laughs> Some of the magazines later on, they even the same. Um, Run the magazine. They change the sizing. So I thought, well, let's try the super plays because I've got a full full run of super plays. They don't fit. They don't fit. Um, they fit, but they wobble a little bit too much. Uh, again, without boring you too much. Essentially, because they're they're not a rigid spine. What happens over time, especially if they're stacked on top of each other, if, if you imagine that's a spine and that's the, the leaf, what happens is it, it tilts that way, so it kind of like bends, and then that end to there, to, to the end there, is longer than it should be. And that's what happened to a few super plays. You know, if, if you looked at them, it'd be fine, but what, what it looks like is the spine curls up, because it, it's, it's rolled. Um, I've put... The mean machines into just the sleeves, no board. Because what I was, it's a bit naughty. I sacrificed the mean machine it's, it, rather than sacrifice the super plates for. Let's put the mean machines in there because the mean machines don't have um, a square spine, they have a rounded spine. So I thought if I put them in there, weigh them down, what might happen is it might force it back into form, as in square it off. Uh, I've had a look at them. Well, I have to just rip this fucking moon apart. I don't bore you again with that. And it, they look okay. I'll have a look again probably tomorrow when my eyes are properly focused and I'm not fucking doing that. Um, but the super play seem to suffer worse because I say because they're a square spine, it roll it, it's it's rolling up. So I don't really want to start compressing them down too much. Um, I back and boarded the fall. Um, Sega Saturn magazine, they look lovely now. And I've done my uh, computer video games because that's what I bought them for. And they look, it, it fits them perfectly. Now, I'm not sure about the latter issues of, of uh, computer video games because I say they change the sizing. Right. So that's where I'm at with that. Now, I'll just show you the sleeves. You're not going to see it. 
monkey, but all they have is like a little lip. But there's no sticky at the top, so I've just put tape on it. I don't think that's probably the right thing to do. But I figured, well, it's not touching anything out. Um, there's no going to be any leaching because it's, it's two layers of plastic. But yeah, they're just open. There's no like seal. There's no resealable seal. Um, I'm guessing you could probably use like um, what do you call that medical tape that you put on plasters and stuff like that. I can't think what it's called now. PT, not not PTFA tape, but anyway, you might better use that. But I've just used cellar tape. Um, let's be honest. By the time they're worth real any money, I'll be fucking long gone dead. Right. So. <laughs> That being said, oh god me, I um I took a punt. I took a massive, massive punt. I think it's worked out. I think it's worked out. Not perfectly, but halfway there. Um, so there's a lady, and I think this was on shit. I think it's what's pieces here. I'm in a um. I mentioned this before, Retro Gaming Magazine Group, Facebook I did, because I mentioned the guy filmed before about uh, the other CVGs um, I'm sure this eBay listing was mentioned someone mentioned it in that group and a lot of people dismissed them they dismissed them on these folders these binders that were in And I was the same thinking. So, I read, and the, the person that was selling these, when you looked at what they were selling, um, it was something like China Dolls or something. It was the, the oddest things, but the antique but like China Dolls. And she had, like, two folders, two binders of these magazines. So I sort of said to her, so look, the second folder, I think I only needed like one from the beginning or something like that. I said, look, would, would you willing to split? Because what she was asking for the both folders was like a lot of money, like 300 quid. Um, and the, the pictures weren't great either. So, and But what she'd done, or what she, she hadn't realised is, the way she described it wasn't really true to the contents. And I'll come to that in a minute. So I sort of said to her, I said, look, I need half basically half of near enough half of what you've got here i need this chunk less one of these but then the other chunk one off the end of that um she wasn't willing to sort of like because i think they're both they were the way she worded it they were both in separate folders so i bought the first folder long story short um and when they come through it was that mixed bag it really was a mixed bag, and I wasn't being pedantic, I wasn't being awful. I said, look, I asked you the condition of these, and you said there's been in the folder that it's very good, and they're not very good. Some of them are, some of them aren't. Um, so I managed to get these, I managed to get 40 quid back off of these. So if you think about it, uh, she wanted both folders for 300 quid. She split it in half, 150. I've got 40 quid back, because I think she knew, she knew. So I've got 110 for these. I don't think it's too bad. So what we do have, I say it's a landmark. It's a landmark. Teaching UK. Issue one. Of the mighty computer and video games. So this is not. So this is the bag and boarding. That's what I'm say, saying. There's a little bit of tape there. Just, just normal set of tape. As you can see. Literally, there's two layers of plastic, and you've got the cardboard behind it. So there's no sort of take touching the magazine, but I do think it looks quite nice. It frames it quite nice, so you can see what's saying about the edging. Um, I'm not going to get it out, but it, issue one, it's not perfect, but it's issue one. Um, I have seen these go from between 60 to 100 above. The way she'd listed it was, she said November 1981 to the end of the second folder. And I'm like, November 81? That's issue one. 
but it wasn't because she didn't know she didn't know it was issue one because she's, she's selling old dolls but I think she knew there was value in them given the age um, so when she agreed to split it in half and because she said and I show the fold now they've been stored in these binders now this group sort of said they ain't legit that's someone's made them up and they might be but it's these ones here now weirdly not what's not helped so people might sort of say yeah the bot these binders have not helped these magazines because these steel rods have kind of like cut into the middle of the magazines on some of them and they've, they've like eroded and split the middle pages and that's what's ruined a few of these I mean a few of them are fucked before that anyway but a few of them I think these haven't helped um, but in her listing she just basically said they're very good because they've been stored in the binder they were very good. She knew they were very good because that's why she said, I'll give you 40 quid back. I'm like, yeah, 110 quid. I mean, um, but then weirdly enough, she'd sold the other set, and then someone must have been asking her about this folder because she then messaged me saying, Oh, do you want to sell the folder back to me? I'm like, Fuck no, do I? Um, I've never seen this before. I need to look through some of the magazines to see. I don't recall them computer video games ever doing a binder that was the general consensus on the Facebook group that it was like oh, someone's just done that themselves it, it, it's not because the aging the wear all of it is very consistent with the, with the age of the magazines so I'm, again you know if we've got fucking time to have a look I think that in some of these magazines further down there is an, is an offer to buy the bind it's out there by the binders a lot of magazines did that you know so we have issue one see this is where this is where the, the, the quality just sort of like drops so issue two is taped up and it's not in great condition and I sent the pictures and said look you know, I'll send them back to you um, because for 150 quid the, the real one I wanted was issue one and I said I've seen that go from 60 to 80 to not to 100 over 100 quid um, it's that's not in bad condition uh, this one's terrible <laughs> basically um, this one again is not great either you can sort of see where it started to roll on the spine uh, this one's, I think, March is not too bad. April's not too bad, I don't think. There's a few that are really terrible. There's a few that are really good. It's really inconsistent. Um, so I'm not going to bore you too much. But they are here. I have got a set, you know, the first. The first that's quite a nice cover. Old, uh, old Sega Zombie Scott might like that one. We've got a Tron one here from September 82. But this one aesthetically doesn't look too great, but internally it's not too bad. It's just got like some weird like coffee or something that, that's bled through. And what you've got to remember the, the literally the especially the first year of CVG, it was printed on cheap paper. It was it wasn't meant to last at, at all. And we've got November 82, so I'm missing I'm missing December. So what she'd done, because these are 12 magazines, see CVG started in, in November 81. Um, so she had December 82 in the other folder, and I said, oh, I will need that, but she wouldn't split it. But for, I think for 100, it sounds a, it is a lot of money, but for 110 quid. Half, I think there was six of these. Six of them that had like um, the central sort of spin, uh, the central hook had, had come loose because of them rods. The other sort of six were okay, but some were worse than that's obviously probably there's one more worse than that. I can't which one it is now. Um, but I think overall it's not a bad deal. 
but yeah, back, back, and, back and boarded, I think that's what we call it. Back and board, back and board. Um, but I thought spending this kind of, you know, not. It's got to, you've got to try and preserve them a little bit better. Um, those binders are not the way to go. I, you know, and I don't suppose the people back in the day thought, yeah, they'd be fine. No one's going to want them in 40 years' time. Fucking weirdo. Tootie's going to want them. But they do. They do. Right, so last stuff then, I think. Then we we're, we're done. It might be the last Kev's box. Ding dong. Kev's box is back. Right, let's have a dive in. It feels very light. Let's see how many we've got in here. One, two. I think we've only got four. Should we do all four? The fucking bumper tootie edition. Like the old Sundays, the car boot. Right. What have we got there? The last four. Fucking hell. International cricket. <laughs> mm. I reckon it's a cricket game. Australian. Yeah, the Aussies love the cricket, don't they? Ooh, Aussie bastards. There you go, look. Uh, just up there, it'll tell you the ill town weight. 1985, no it's not 1985, <laughs> I said that last time. Just say 1985 but it's not, it's probably going to be a lot later than that. Uh, international cricket, I have no idea. I, was, I don't get cricket. I don't understand it. I don't understand the law and the pull of it. Um, I always used to say when people talk about cricket, do you remember... Um, Leonardo DiCaprio well in Thailand god what's it called the island is it the island because weirdly enough <laughs> sort of tangent when that film came out it was filmed in Thailand in like I think it's Koh Samui or whatever or Phuket or whatever I actually went to Thailand, and a lot of people had bought that book and was reading it on the on the plane. I had um, All Saints singing the song Four Shores, um, but anyway, in that video, there's a bit where there's an English guy, English, English, a black English guy. I can't remember his name. Is he was in like um, let's say Pulp Fiction, not Pulp Fiction at all. And um, there's obviously different nationalities. I'm sure it's called the island. Um, Leonardo DiCaprio, you all have heard of it, you know what it is. Anyway. And they all set this cricket thing up, and, it, and I, I think it might be an Australian guy goes, Right, does anyone not understand the rules of cricket? And he puts his hand up, and everyone puts their hand up. That's me. I don't get it, I don't understand it. Is it it's just rounders? Is it, it's just like fucking rounders, isn't it? Right arm, open wicket. Three balls remaining. Does anyone who still does not understand? But there's people at work and they fucking love it and I'm like, it's just rounders in it. I don't get cricket. I don't get it. Anyway, moving swiftly on. Oh you fucker. I've seen that in the reflection. Oh my god. I'm glad I've done this now. Do you know how many times I've been looking for this game? Oh you fucker Kev. You absolute dancer. Oh. It's Gorilla War. Gorilla War in the arcade was fucking amazing. It was like um, Ikari Warriors. 
SNK title. Oh, I guess it's 985. I think it's 985. Um, there's no date on it. It is Australian. So, Mark Burnt Out Culture had this playing on. Um, God, it must have been the last video he made about like nine months ago. And when he had it, I was like, I remember that game. And I think he might remember, he might have mentioned it was an arcade game as well. And that's why I remember, I didn't know we had an NES port. So, it's only got an American and a pal Australian release. Never come out in the UK. And it, it's basically a Carry Warriors clone. But me and John, we, I remember playing this in the arcade, and I've been looking for this. There's one copy, Lee's Deals. Um, it, it's technically complete, but it, the the manuals, the, the the box is fucked. The manuals there, but the box is fucked. And I've been, I've, I've got this in a safe search. So I'm glad I didn't fucking buy it because he changed it to offers, and I was really tempted to make an offer. I, I looked at the box. I can't salvage the box. It's it's way too far gone. Um. Oh man, that's awesome. That's probably the, um, the happiest I've seen to see a game come out of Kev's box. I know it sounds daft to you guys. You probably think, oh, you've looked through them all. I haven't. Honestly, I have not looked through this box. Um, I just trusted Kev. I sent him a shitload of money eventually, and he sent me the box of games. Um, and I'm sure he said there might be some Bruce's in there. But that is amazing. I'm so fucking chuffed to get that, even though I've had it for like about fucking four months. It's probably longer than that, actually. Probably six months. Oh, that's awesome. Definitely check out Gorilla War. Um, I'm not sure. I think Mark had. That did Mark have? I think he might have had the Spectrum or the C64 version playing. And what it, it spiked my interest. He mentioned the arcade. I was like, yes. And then when I checked, it was like the only other home release, console-wise, was the NES. I think that's right. Mine is adult, and the temperature is going up. Now thirty-five point eight. <laughs> Fucking bitter. Fucking bitter. What do you think? Going out in the coals. Fucking want to get out of here, mate. Although it's not blast furnace temperature. It, we're getting there. Blast furnace is like forty degrees, man. Then, then they start sweating. Then the beer, the beers aren't sweating. Look, they're not betting. Yeah, not betting. Not sweating. Not betting either. <sighs> That's when just get up. We'll do the last two out of Kev's box because <laughs> I don't want to be buying the same games again. That was a close one. Oh, I'm so chuffed with Gorilla War. Fuck me. Amazing. Amazing. Right. Chin chin, motherfuckers. Here we go. Let me just double check to make sure there's only two. There's only two left. And you see that one? It all says 9.85 to me. Ooh. Ooh, okay. Oh, it's an Italian one. Corvette ZR1 Challenge. Never heard of it. Milton Bradley. I'm surprised that didn't come out in the UK. I have I don't know. Is it like a um, Rad Racer? Is it a top down? The top down one. I do like a top down racer. I don't mind the um, virtual scrolling. <clears throat> what do you call it? The Horizon. Outrun. Style ones, Top Gear, whatever, but I don't, I don't, I don't know. No, an M MB, Milton Bradley, he's probably like a fucking slot car. 
Corvette ZR1. Is it, was it Corvette ZR1? No, it wasn't kit, was it? No, I don't think so. Who drove a... Who drove? Drove? Who drove a... Who drove a Corvette? Back in... Because normally that's what they do, don't they? You know, like... Crockett and Tubbs. Ferraris and stuff. I'm trying to think it did a Corvette. Corvette ZR1 challenge. Anderson's postcard. <clears throat> There'll be some footage knocking about. Because uh, I haven't got Scooby Doo. <clears throat> about. Definitely not about the cricket. Gorilla War, yes. I say it's like a um, vertical scrolling. Like I say, very much akin to a, a carry warriors. I don't think it had the rotary sticks. I think only Akari Warriors had it, rotary sticks. I could be wrong. But I have known, been known to be wrong. Right, so the last Kev's box. Kev's box. Last lap. Iron Tunk. The Invasion of Normandy. Another wrestling cat. I don't know anything about this one. Hmm. Was it? Um, yes, an Aussie one. Anybody know anything about Iron Tank? Come on, you Iron Tanks. I'm hoping, I'm hoping it's not like, um, I'm going to say JJ Abrahams. <laughs> JJ Abrahams, <laughs> tank salt. Um, they can't be on the, they can't do a, an Abrahams tank on the NES. I'm hoping it's like a top down, kind of like a little shooter where you're controlling the tank or something, or maybe like an advanced walls where you're manipulating armies. But don't be like, don't try and do a 3D isometric thing. But I'll put some footage up here, and hopefully not. But that is so with a landmark, a landmark addition to the collection. Computer and video games issue one. And sadly, the end. What is now the end of Kev's box? I'm gonna to have to come up with another um, another thing <laughs> for some of the videos. But my God, fucking Gorilla War! Gee, I'm honestly, if I'd bought that from Lee's Deals and then I'd done this video like a few weeks later, I'm so pissed off. So the, but that, I told you, it was it was a blind box. I wasn't lying. I wasn't lying at all. Right, two signing off. Okay now, it's nearly thirty eight degrees now. Take it easy, YouTube. I'll speak to you soon. Bye bye.